right, so welcome. Welcome, welcome. Let me go ahead and get started. We're going to do things a little bit different because I'm trying out. You guys will figure it out later. Y'all see, when, once it happens, y'all see what I'm, what I'm trying to do. Um, now I figure out, now I figure the eye, the eye level is wrong. This is harder than what I thought. I am not a tech person. Yes, you are. You need to start affirming it. Okay, got it. I am a techie person. I am a tech person. I am a tech person. All right. For a minute, I can do this. <laughs> You all, it's all good. Certain things I know, certain things I do not know. And I'm okay with that. All right, so let's start. Action. All right. <laughs> She's a millionaire, presented by Monique Jackson. Um, our motto here is, girl, put some more zeros behind your goals. Today, we're going to discuss branding. As I always like to say, today is a great day to be a millionaire. All right. The regular housekeeping rules still apply. Keep your phones, um, your audio muted. Um, in the chat, please share your name, where you live, what you do. If nothing else, take those two ends, your name and what you do. Share that in the chat room. You'll be surprised how many business besties you will find. Take notes and share them with me. Tag me at Monique Jackson, the number one. I definitely will repost. If there's something that resonates with you, I want to know. So definitely tag me. So uh, week one in Brandon, what we went over last week, um, we touched on a few of these things. What's your purpose behind your brand, doing your research? Um, what are some of the key qualities and benefits of um, your brand offer, creating a brand voice, um, letting, uh, letting your brand personality shine, building your brand story and messaging, creating a brand logo and a tagline, incorporating your brand into every aspect of your business. This is so important. Um, staying true to your brand building. We're going to continue this conversation. Um, we're going to dive in a little bit about um, really captivating your uh, your brand story is really where I want to where I want to land today. Um, we're going to talk about telling your story, um, the importance of your bio, uh, defining your brand, having a clear brand message, being authentic, and being consistent. Those things are really important. All right, so captivating your brand story. You want to do a few things when you're doing this, um, and we're going to talk about it a bit here today. Um, I want you to prepare yourself to ask questions, make comments, and so that we can discuss this, right? So we're going to talk about this. Captivating your brand story. Define your mission, your brand personality. We have to do those things. Um, if you all remember earlier, um, in the conversations of She's a Millionaire, we talked about missions. Um, as you go through getting the press to say yes, uh, we talk uh, uh, a bit about uh, your mission. We start off, actually, module one starts off with your mission. And and uh, and so we have to go back and visit those things, do the work so that you can understand. Once you understand your mission and your brand personality, um, that is actually half of the math, right? That's half of the equation. The other equation comes with the next thing, which is attracting your audience and actually keeping their attention. And how do you do that? Um, you build a story, but once you build a story, you need to study that story. You need to really remember the the me, you, we uh, conversation. Uh, we've touched on that a bit, but you really need to remember that. Um, we'll go back over that. If you have questions, please just ask, right? Um, you need to paint the picture. It's not really just about uh, telling the story, telling your story, but you need to paint the picture in a way where people can actually close their eyes and visualize it and see themselves in that story and imagine, um, not only imagine, but actually experience whatever it is that you've experienced or whatever it is that you're telling them, right? So it's not just about telling the story, it's really about painting the picture. Um, one thing that's super important when you're creating your brand and you're building your brand is staying consistent. You um, you have to you have to stay consistent. People want to know uh, what should what they should expect um, from you, your company, um, from the experience, from the product. So stay consistent, right? And 
when I say here, be the change, it's more so like really making the difference, being, being impactful at what it is that you want to do, whether it's a product or a service, um, whether it's a skill set or what have you, you really want to be impactful. You, um, I, <laughs> I often, um, realize that the difference between uh, myself and other people, the way they teach is, is that I really take pride in keeping things very intimate um, and very personal. So I, I, my, my point of contact with you all, I, I, I love to talk to you all. I love to reach out. I love to um, extend my services sometimes <laughs> um, uh, and just help out, you know what I mean? So I realize that that's the way that I feel like I'm a little bit more impactful or I'm a little bit different than other uh, educators or teachers. I'm, I'm de definitely like, I like us to meet weekly. I like for us to talk. I like to engage and ask questions and things like that. So you definitely want to figure out what makes you a bit different um, and how you can really be impactful. And I don't care if it really is just selling uh, a t-shirt. It's like, what is your slogan? You know what I mean? And what is the message? What is the movement behind that messaging that goes on the t-shirt? And how do you make people take pride in actually um, wearing the shirt? One thing that pops into my mind when I say that, um, not that I was supposed to talk about this, but um, one thing that pops into my mind when I think about shirts or, or clothing, um, you know, when I was in high school, uh, cross colors was a big thing. And some people may not remember cross colors, but it was very, um, they used uh, the, the African colors, right? Uh, we took pride in wearing those things. I remember being in 10th grade and like I knew every, every guy on campus had to have some cross color jeans, right? And they were bold, the reds, the yellows, the uh, the greens, you know, black, like staple African colors. And so we took pride in that because we knew that that was an African owned company, right? Uh, another one was FUBU, right? For us, by us, right? And so everyone took a lot of pride in wearing uh, that type of apparel because we understood that it was it was for our culture it was it was it was made by us it was for us right that form another one right so so when you think about even the clothing right people are like oh it's just clothes no it's not there's a message behind the reason why people wear Louis Vuitton or Gucci because they feel like it makes them feel important right they know that it's an exclusive brand. Um, so, so keep in mind, whatever it is that you do, um, whether you are actually educating people, whether you're providing some type of service, skill set, some type of product, you know, um, you can always be impactful in a different way. Um, and then the last thing you always want to keep in mind is just press go. You know, um, I think we're always, all of us are somewhat guilty of that, uh, the procrastination. I talk to people that, uh, that I coach and people that I lean to for different services and things like that. Um, and I'm always stuck too with when to press go. And I will tell you some of the times that I'm the most successful was just when I close my eyes and just press that green dot and just like activate the action, you know, activate the action. That's what that should say. Just activate it. Um, but we're going to talk about that a little bit more. Um, and telling your story, right? So this is how um, your people connect with you. There's something uh, about who you are and what you've experienced in life or what you know um, that draws in a certain audience, right? So you really have to share them, um, share you with them, right? They, they a lot of times are coming for you, right? I, I, I trust me. I've lived this over and over and over and over again. So definitely you want to tell your story. You want to create a bio. When you, when you are looking at your brand story, a lot of people won't tell you this, but one of the secret ingredients that I've had when I've helped build a lot of successful businesses, um, a lot of successful careers for, uh, for other entrepreneurs and even celebrities, right? Is that we look at a few things, right? We look at the people and the brands that that they identify with, right? Then we, um, we we write down some of the core values that this person has, right? So what do you and your business really represent? What are your core values, right? 
who are the people in the other brands that you identify with, that you admire, that you're enamored by. Um, see the connection, right? See what see what's in there that 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 really um, stands out for you, right? And then I would take it a step further, and I honestly do this for with with some of my one on one talent that I uh, that I coach. We write the bio, right? We write the bio, and we take on all of these things. We we look at the brands, we look at the people, we look at other people's careers, other people, you know, uh, blueprints, right? We take on the, we think about what are the three things that are most important or to you and your business. And we figure out how to write a bio as if it's already happened, right? So that's when the affirming really comes in, in hand, right? That's when the identifying where you want to go and then we break it down and create um we create a business plan we create measurable actions that we can take that are going to actually get us closer to becoming the person that we say that we want to become in our business right so I, I hope you're getting that so it's not a bio that you're going to share with the public right it's not a bio that you're going to share with the public this is what you're going to do you're going to again you're going to look at the people, right, that you admire in your industry. You're going to look at brands that you identify with, that resonate with you. You're going to write that down. Then you're going to look at the core values that you that are important to you, right? In, in, important to you in your business and your brand, right? Um, the core values that make you special and unique, the core values that make people really draw into you. I like to say personally that I am, uh, that I like to educate, I like to inspire, I like to empower, right? That's, those are the words that really resonate with me, right? Uh, but you're going to look at these core values and then you're going to take a moment, take a piece of paper and write your bio based off of all of those things that you already want to accomplish, right? And this is just your personal thing for you. It's not for you to share with anyone. It's not for you to go out and share it, of course, with the media and, and lie about who you are and what you've accomplished. No, 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 no. That's not what it's for. It's for you to actually create a roadmap. You're going to then create a business plan that's going to make you meet that person. I want to meet the Monique that I said that I'm going to be in three years. And so I'm already writing. I've, I, I've started writing down that bio and what that bio looks like. And so what it does is it gives me a checklist. It gives me measurable goals that I have to hit in order to really become her, right? And so that's what I'm inviting you to do. Create your bio. Create the bio of who you say you're going to be two years from now, three years from now, so on and so forth, right? Okay. So uh, define your brand. And then here we are. So when you're creating your brand, there are a lot of brainstorming. There's a lot of brainstorming that you should be doing. Um, I believe I said this to, <laughs> to one of you all uh, last week, that every time you hit a point, you're going to realize that that's not it, right? You, you, you think, oh, okay, when I get there, that's it. No, no, no. You're going to realize that there's something else. There's something above. You're, you're here right now and you're working hard to get here. Well, once you get here, you're going to realize that there's something up above that, though, too. So you're constantly. And then once you get there, you're going to realize, oh, my gosh, and I wonder what's up there or I got to get up there, you know. And so you're going to constantly be climbing. You're going to constantly be, be working on your business and your brand. Right. And so you're going to write. You're going to take a piece of paper again. You're going to write down brainstorm just with words. Um uh, that are genuine, that, that are positive descri description, a positive description of who you are and who your brand is. These words are important. Why are the words important? Because it really sounds like when I'm telling you to, to take a piece of paper and write down words, um, in, in different values that genuinely resonate, right? That, that are positive about you and your brand that represents who you are. It sounds very, very repetitive, right? It's like, write this down that resonates. Write this down that sounds right. The write this down that's core value. Write this down. Well, the reason why you're writing is because you are crafting your story. You're crafting, once you craft your story, you're crafting these imagery, this imagery of who you say you are or who you say or where you say you're going, right? 
And so you really want to work hard at um, coming up with these words, these uh, the descriptions, the things that will carry you over in conversation because the whole point is, is that your messaging has to be on point, right? So that you can do these interviews, so that you can uh, go before a stage and actually sell your business and your brand. The messaging has to be right so that when people hear you talk about your business, they know that they know that they know that you know what you're talking about. That's where the trust factor comes in, that you can speak these words in your sleep and you're consistent and you're true to who you say that you are. So don't get discouraged because I keep telling you, write this down, write that down and look at your core values, then look at your business this and look at that. No, you're going to be writing for the rest of your life, right? You're going to be writing and constantly formulating this thing um, to work in your advantage. You know, if, if you want to be successful, you're going to have to keep on writing and thinking of ways, honestly, to say the same thing. Because nine times out of 10, if you have that one business, that one business is going to have one main mission, right? Your one business is going to have a set of core values. You yourself is going to have one goal really in mind, whatever that is, right? And so, but you just have to find ways of being able to say that, right? If I'm talking to young uh, teenage girls about business, I'm not going to deliver it the same way I might talk to women of a certain age that have already had children, been divorced, own property, and so on and so forth. Their life experiences are different. So I have to be able to capture those words, right? Um, for a younger audience, or I have to capture those words for a more un inexperienced audience. And I have to capture a different set of words for a more mature audience, right? Same conversation, same messaging, but the words are what's going to empower me to be able to connect and engage with that audience, right? There's no point. There's no point in wasting your potential customer's time by speaking a whole bunch of jargon that's in uh, your industry. You know, it's in your industry, it's your industry jargon, and it makes you sound like you know what you're talking about. But if it's not resonating with the common person that happens to be your client, your customer, then it's no good anyways. It's no good. You're just talking just to sound smart. Not getting the message to the right people, people, will hurt your business, right? Not getting the right message to the right people will hurt your business, okay? So, here we go. <laughs> Have a clear brand message, right? So once you've decided what your niche is, because that's a big one too, right? That we have to dig into, right? People, you know, determine what your niche is. Don't be afraid to like narrow it down, right? Narrow down who it is that you're going to be talking to and why it's important that they have your thing, whatever your thing is, whatever your thing is, a product, a service, skill set, whatever it is, right? So once you determine that, once you determine who your niche audience is um, and, you know, what your core services are, what your products and your brands, whatever, um, creating your message, uh, like I said, it's a constant thing, but you want to make sure that you are being as clear as possible, right? when um when talking to them you have to know who you're talking to i just said this right you have to know who you're talking to in order to to select the right words where they're going to actually um interpret it the correct way and still be engaged it's important being authentic <laughs> this is where being authentic i think this is where people this is where people go wrong. Uh, there's somebody for everybody, right? There's somebody for everybody. And what I feel like is, is that a lot of people play up this game of who they are um, or who they're not. And then people, the, the general public can see straight through it. It's too much going on. It's too much social media and, you know, Google and, and, and researching. And if you've done just a little bit, there's people out there that are going to go looking for who you are and what you say you do. So I would say this, though, um, the best way to connect with people is just being genuinely who you are. They can see uh, they can see a, a, an imposter um, many miles away. It's a difference between having 
how can I say it? There's a difference between having imposter syndrome and just flat out being an imposter, right? Imposter syndrome is when you are a little bit nervous, um, you know, when you're second guessing yourself a little bit there, right? But you're really being who you are. It's just that you're second guessing because everyone else makes what they do look all shiny and glossy and big. And so you're like, do I really deserve to be on this stage? Ooh, I got invited to do a TED talk. Am I, quali am, am I qualified? Yeah, look at your resume. You are qualified. Um, look at the experiences that you've had. Yes, you are qualified, right? But you get a bit confused because you think that this other person, the last four people that did the TED talk are so much more awesome than what you are. Well, you're just as awesome. You know, um, I have a habit of being really who I am in front of my students because I want them to see. I want you all to experience that. Listen, we all are figuring it out every other day. That's just what the truth is, being an entrepreneur or a small business owner. That's just what the truth is, right? And so when you're on stage, and when I say on stage, that means whether you're on a Zoom, teaching a class, whether you're on stage, uh, reading you know, uh, uh, a section of your book and, and, and giving a lecture or a speech, whether you're doing an interview with someone about um, a beauty brand that you just launched or a business that you've started, you know, whether you're on uh, Channel 7 News um, talking about the culture and in, 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 in your services and why your therapy sessions are so important right now because it's Mental Health Month. Whatever it is that you are doing, when you're on that stage, be authentic. If you're just on social media, be authentic. Be truly who you are. Your people will come looking for you. They will find you. They will resonate with you, right? Uh, when you try to be too much, when you try to be too much, that's when everything goes wrong, right? Uh, be consistent. This is one thing that's big in, um, in, in building a brand, right? I, I've tested this myself just to see. And I realized that when I am consistent uh, with, with whatever it is, right? Even if it is, I just finished talking about social media. If it is just going live, right? I realize that there is a true following that will come along with that. Whenever I get on a on a whim, right, which is not very often, I get on a whim and I say I'm going to go live, and I go live and I and I do it for a week straight. I realize that I see things like uh, my following goes up. I see things like my likes and my comments go up. I see things like people, more people are coming to my live, more people are DMing me, asking me about my business and things like that. So whatever outlet that you are using to touch your audience, right, to touch your potential client or customer, make sure you're consistent with that. Uh, you know, I play the turtle game a lot and I don't suggest that with anyone, right? I play the turtle game. I peek my head out for a little bit, then I go right back in my shell. I wouldn't suggest that for anyone who is building a business or a brand. Be consistent, be, consi be consistent. So wherever it is that you're showing up, whether it's social media, whether it's ads, whether it's email marketing, whatever it is that you are doing, right? Be consistent with that. Um, and not only be consistent with how you show up, be consistent with your messaging, right? Because again, people are getting to know you as you're building your business, as you're building your brand. People are getting to know you and they're determining what it is that they like or don't like about you. And once they decide that they like you, they're only going to stick with you if you're consistent, if you're reliable, because no one wants to be disappointed or frustrated, right? They, so they want to know when they're going to see you. They're, they're going to want to know what type of products or services you're offering. They're going to want to know that it's going to be like 100% for real, right? That they're not getting gift. And one of the ways that they know this is by how you approach them. Consistency is key. So show up, keep your messaging on point, right? Um, don't make a whole bunch of changes and things like that all at one time, right? Um, like don't change like your brand colors, your logo, your, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, the products that you're selling in your store. Don't change all of that at one time, right? Um, because when you do that, then people don't know what to expect next, right? Um, you know, just, just remember that, that, 
your audience, once they, once they key into you, once they befriend you, once they start liking you, in order for them to get to know you and actually trust you is from your consistency, you being authentic and things like that. So really stick to who you say you are with them so that they know that you're a reliable source that they can trust and they'll be happy to uh, share some time and share their money with you, right? And that's just what the truth is. Oh, goodness. Let's do some Q and A. And I'm going to try to stop sharing my screen. Go into this this way. Okay. I think I did that. Maybe I want it on speaker here. Okay. Do we have any questions? I have a question, Lily. Hello. Yeah, my camera. Oh, works. Hello, Jules. Um, I just said, you know, I started 